Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Bucket Ponds, and this is my farm aquarium. That's right, this is the farm tank. This is a 20 gallon all natural aquarium that's been running since August of 2019. Uh, it's now, uh, what, June of 2021. Uh, I've never changed water in here. Uh, I've never applied any kind of uh, artificial fertilizer, no CO2, uh, nothing like that. Uh, for substrate, I use uh, different grades of sand, including some sand sourced from my own yard, uh, along with some marble chunks, large marble stone. Uh, so there's a lot of nutrients in here. There's a lot of uh, calcium and things floating around. Uh, up in the top corner there, you can see a water pump, and I have an air pump in here as well, and a small supplemental hood light uh, on top of the tank. Uh, most of the light for this tank comes from the window behind it, and... Uh, just a nice project. It's growing really well, and I want to share some things about this tank with you, including the Nutella macroalgae. Now, for substrate, you can see here uh, my marble stone. Some of them actually uh, are a type of pink marble. Uh, but along with that, I have a mulm layer. I do not vacuum the tank. Uh, along with, uh, you know, uh, refusing to do water changes, I also refuse to vacuum. It's almost the same technique. The same chore could be applied to both things. And uh, I'm not doing either one of them. So you will see a thin mulm layer. Now in a tank that, uh, a more traditional style aquarium, the mulm layer would cover these rocks. It would cover everything. There'd be just this horrible mulm everywhere. Not that it's a bad thing. In my personal point of view, I believe that mulm is beneficial, uh, both for bacteria and for uh, tiny creatures. Uh, now here's a better shot. We'll get back to the mulm layer here in just a minute. Uh, but here's my Nutella macroalgae. This is the main star of the tank. This is the uh, main filter of the tank. This is the uh, the powerhouse, the the plant that keeps the system going. Now, uh, when I had that problem with blue green algae a while back, like I mentioned in that video, where that the water sample I took from this tank it turned completely blue. It was crazy. Uh, but when I had that problem with blue green algae in this aquarium, I had harvested so much Nutella uh, to share on my store that. Uh, it caused the tank to crash. It nearly was devastated. You can see some of my uh, snails up there. Uh, but yes, the tank has recovered, and I'm once again able to harvest Nutella from here and share it with you guys. I also have uh, several, probably a dozen other uh, farm aquarium type setups where I'm growing Nutella now so I can mass produce it. Uh, but yeah, uh, this Nutella is very beneficial it removes a lot of the uh, waste and uh, toxic material from the tank. It turns it into more Nutella. And at the end of the day, you basically uh, get in there and cut some Nutella out. And here's a better shot of the Nutella. You can see uh, some with the light on it right there, and then more in the dark in the background. Uh, it might have a slight blue-green algae uh, look to it, but that's just what happens when you have uh, such a large mass of Nutella with the sunlight behind it. Uh, but in this tank, I've almost completely beaten blue-green algae. Uh, it is a type of bacteria. You're not going to kill it. You're not going to completely eradicate it. It's part of nature, and you will have it in your tank. The trick is to work against it. And by that, I mean that uh, you must include plants or even macroalgae uh, that grows faster than the blue-green algae, uh, something that can consume the loose nutrients before the blue-green algae has a chance. And uh, for me, that is uh, my Nutella macroalgae here. Now, uh, this also has an added benefit. Uh, it's a great, amazing filter for my aquarium. Once again, I don't change water. I don't change filter pads. I don't do anything. I haven't even tested pH in here in a very long time. Uh, the Nutella takes care of the tank for me, at least for, you know, removing uh, nitrogen and things like that. Uh, but yes, as you can see, I have a pretty dense mulm layer, and the Nutella actually produces a root-like structure. Uh, it's called a holdfast, I believe, but it's uh, it's part of uh, macroalgae uh, biology. Uh, but the Nutella does produce these holdfasts, and it digs into the mulm layer, and it binds it up. It keeps it pinned down, and it helps to control things a little bit. You see, my mulm layer almost looks like sand. It's very evenly distributed. It's not clumpy brown stuff like you would expect in a traditional aquarium. Uh, now, in my attempts to set up a natural pond uh, style tank here, I have uh, succeeded, in my opinion. This is a sunlit pond. 
uh, pond in a fish tank, basically. Uh, I would like to say that it's it's different than most aquariums you might see, and I reluctantly use any equipment in here at all. You know, I, I use the pump because I have to aerate the water. Uh, but other than that, like this is a very natural tank uh, to the point where uh, we have, to the point where I have uh, so many ostracods in here, uh, it's hard to see from this exact view here, uh, but you can count my ostracods probably in the tens of thousands uh, just living in this tank at this very moment. They're everywhere. Um, they do a great job of cleaning up every little bit of food, every little bit of edible material they consume. And uh, they don't eat the macroalgae. Nothing seems to eat the Nutella, which is another benefit. And uh, yeah, I'm going to cut to a scene right now because I want to show you exactly what I mean about these ostracods. And uh, my overall point is, uh, you know, I, I meant to set up a true pond style aquarium and it appears to be a success uh, because we're entering into the point where ostracods are beginning to be fossilized in the substrate. Uh, it sounds a little crazy but let's check it out. So here's the uh, substrate layer right in that bottom corner of my tank in the lower right corner and as you can see uh, we have uh, tons of ostracods both above and below the surface of the substrate. Uh, now, all those ostracods are about the same size down there, so they seem to be dying from old age and then drifting to the bottom and then being buried in the subsequent mulm layers. You'll also see some things moving around through those layers down there. Uh, there are some snails and uh, I assume uh, some diving beetles, though I couldn't get a very good picture of them. Uh, but you can see uh, at the very top of the substrate layer, we have my detritus worms along with some other small creatures. They're doing their job. They're breaking down this mold. They're decomposing it. And we get a little dark here for some reason. Mm -hmm. There we go. Uh, but they're breaking down the mold. Uh, they're controlling it. They're helping me maintain the tank. And that mold is in is then becoming a substrate. It's becoming like a soil, burying those uh, ostracods there and begin, uh, beginning the process of fossilization. It sounds a little weird, but that's basically what's happening here. We've set up such an effective uh, simulation of a natural pond. It's developing uh, stratification, soil layers, and uh, we're beginning the process of fossilizing uh, ostracods. Now, I don't think I'll even live long enough for that to be a possibility, uh, but there it is in the microcosm. You get an idea of how it works. These ostracods live here. You see all a bunch of them there. They live here, they die, they reproduce, and they, you know, their life cycle. And then they pile up in the bottom and get buried. Other creatures build up the soil layer on top of them, and that's it. And now a little further uh, higher up in the water column in the tank here, you can see more of my Nutella. This is the Nutella as it looks when it's uh, simply growing in the water column. And it is pinned to the bottom, kind of like a root. Uh, but it provides a strong habitat for all of these ostracods and several other small species in here. Uh, it's really amazing the uh, numbers of ostracods you can keep in an aquarium that has Nutella. And uh, now it's not just ostracods. Some of my other tanks are loaded with snails and infusoria, and uh, especially detritus worms. Uh, it turns out Nutella is a very uh, useful filter for water, and uh, I believe humans should make use of it too. But, you know, we're uh, quite a bit behind the times when it comes to natural methods. Uh, so yeah, this is what the Nutella looks like in the middle of the tank. You know, it's very stringy green. It is very plant-like. And I would call it a beneficial macroalgae. It's not a problem. It's not going to poison your tank. It doesn't stink. It actually smells pretty nice when you pull it out of the water. Uh, but let's look at some other things in here that I want to show you. Now I did say that this was a bioactive aquarium. And uh, it's a lot more than just ostracods. You can see several tiny uh, worm species here cruising around. Some kind of nematode or something like that. And then you have the green hydra. Now for a while I was uh, struggling with ideas about how to raise them and how to do it. I was reading various projects and scientific papers online. And uh, just here recently, you know, I remembered, oh wait, I'm growing vast numbers of green hydra in my farm aquarium. So there you go. Uh, you know, you could think of my farm tank as a massive live culture. It's not just a monoculture, it's several different species. Uh, to me, it's like uh, just planting a bunch of vegetables in a small spot. That way you have a whole salad when it's done growing. That's a big understatement. But that's basically what the tank is. I'm not just raising ostracods. You know, I'm not just culturing fish, which is what you could call if you were a guppy breeder or something like that. 
Uh, but I'm raising all of these different creatures together and trying to identify, like, how are they useful in this tank? And what are their purposes? Now, my green hydra, obviously, they catch and kill small prey. And they also, uh, you know, reproduce and form more, more hydra. There's quite a few of them in here. And this is filmed with a macro lens, so uh, you get an idea they're very small. But even in this small section of the tank here, you can see several of them. And they're very beautiful and graceful creatures. Uh, you shouldn't worry too much if you have green hydra. They're generally uh, not going to hurt your larger fish. And uh, I like to see them myself. I've never had a problem with them. I've raised uh, tons of guppies that have actually like fed on green hydra, so don't worry too much. Here's another shot without the macro lens, and you can see the vast number of hydra. They're very dense here. And they do, uh, at first glance, look like a stringy algae or something, but when you get in a little close, you realize that, oh no, that's one of those hydra things. And uh, green hydra is kind of like, uh, like a small jellyfish. It glues itself to a rock or to a, the glass in your tank. And uh, though they can harm some small fish, and there may be larger hydra out there, uh, my green hydra are uh, uh, basically uh, placid and harmless to my fish, at least in my experience. Uh, but yeah, guys, I wanted to show you some details about how I grow Nutella macro algae in my farm aquarium. Now you have some knowledge and some ideas. Uh, you know what substrate I use. I use mixed grades of sand. I use marble, marble chunks. And I also suggest that you use a very well-established aquarium to start growing your Nutella. With that being said, uh, be very, uh, be prepared for your Nutella to take over the aquarium. Be prepared to trim it back. Be prepared to start new aquariums with your Nutella as it grows. Um, as for heating, cooling, things like that, uh, the only temperature I can advise is, I don't know, keep it warm. Keep it warm in the tank. Uh, I don't check temperatures in my aquariums. I just keep it next to a window so it does however well it does, and it's worked out great for this Nutella so far. So that, let that be another lesson. Uh, if you're having trouble growing your Nutella, put it in a jar, set it outside, let it get some sunlight. It sounds a little crazy, but I've had Nutella take over uh, a complete jar. Yeah, I've had it take over a complete jar just by setting some water in a jar out in the sunlight with a little Nutella scrap that I forgot about. After a few months, it grew like crazy. Uh, so if you're trying to grow Nutella, I hope this video has helped you some. Keep the tank warm. Uh, go for a uh, sand and stone substrate preferably with mulm from an established aquarium. Uh, give it a lot of light, and there you go. You should be growing Nutella uh, on your own pretty soon. Um, if you have purchased from me, if you bought Nutella from my store on Etsy, uh, please get on there and give me a review. I need to know how your plants are growing. I need to know what's going on. Um, only one or two people left reviews. They said everything was growing really well, so that's great. Uh, but I need to hear from everybody, so we got a good idea what's going on. Uh, anyway, guys, I'm Bucket Ponds, and I got to go. And I will see y'all soon.